As I promised during my campaign, I embrace the responsibility of leadership in tough times with all that I have, with all that is in me. You see, I was aware of the city's challenges when I announced my intent to hold this office. And more than 100 days in, I am no less confident that the talented team of women and men we have assembled in my administration and the committed members of the Atlanta City Council and the Atlanta Judiciary can rectify it. Since taking office, my administration has set out on transforming our government, trying to lead by example, turning toward doing the hard things. The foundation of my campaign was built on my promise to bring down crime in this city. The foundation of my administration is being built on the fulfillment of that promise. Thus far, we have hired 103 new police officers. Crime between January and April 2010 is down 19% over the same period in 2009. Violent crime between January and April 2010 is down 21% over the same period. Average time to answer 911 calls between January and April 2010 has dropped from 16 seconds to nine seconds. That might not seem like a lot. That may not seem like a lot, but when your life is on the line, seconds matter. Despite the progress we have made, we must remember that behind every single crime statistic, there is a person who has been impacted in ways that hurt our sense of community. It damages who we are. That is why in the 2011 budget, I will ask the Atlanta City Council to appropriate funds to hire an additional 100 police officers and for higher pay for our officers so that they can afford to live in the city that they have been sworn to protect. And in the area of public works, the percentage of garbage, recycling, and yard trimming collections being performed on the schedule every day has risen from 85% in January 2010 to over 99% in March 2010, moving towards Peter Raymond's goal of 99.9% .9 for garbage and trash collection, just in case you think we're not sweating the details. We absolutely are. Before the end of May, we will receive the report from our pension review panel led by John Malott. Upon receipt of that report, we must take every step which is within the power of the city of Atlanta's government to reduce the rapidly expanding pension obligation, an obligation which has grown between 9 and 14 percent every year for the last six years. And now one out of every five dollars of the city's general fund budget goes to meet this debt. This risk jeopardizes the financial solvency of our city and must be addressed through responsible action right now. Another issue which is very close to my heart is the Centers of Hope Initiative. I believe that we must invest in our children's future and prepare them for a better tomorrow, creating safe havens of esteem. Therefore, next week, I will appoint an advisory blue ribbon panel to develop recommendations on how to best realize the vision for Atlanta's Centers of Hope. Members on this panel will come from the civic community, the business community, the youth development community, and the political community. The community response to this empowering program has been tremendous and demonstrates the greatness of our city. And for anyone who has a doubt, We will build the Beltline, we will build the Civil and Human Rights Museum, and we must stand shoulder to shoulder with the Woodruff Art Center and do everything Atlanta can do to ensure their performance art center is built, because great cities have great art. I have said that I plan to wholeheartedly support our downtown businesses and bring conventions back to the city. Therefore, today, I am recommending that we start over 
and draft a new panhandling ordinance that works. What we have now does not stop professional begging, and it doesn't help people who are genuinely in need of services. The facts are in the figures. From 2005 to 2008, we have not had arrest under the panhandling ordinance. We need a law that protects our residents and visitors from those who would take advantage of their kindness by aggressively soliciting money for a living. And a law with unenforceable provisions doesn't help anyone, not our residents, not our visitors, not our business, and not those who are trying to build their lives. But please know that I will not take this approach without compassion. But we do have to be responsible in protecting what is an $11 billion industry that contributes 217,000 jobs to the city of Atlanta. So we will have. We will have a surge in strength, but as Atlanta always does, and as my predecessors did, we will have an equal surge of compassion through our Gateway Center. In proudly sharing a few of the achievements of my first 100 days in office, I am by no means cutting down the nets before the championship is won. We haven't even gotten warmed up. I know that there are many major contests yet to come, and candidly, I welcome them all. And I am deeply humbled by all that remains to be done in order to move us to the next level. You know, I recently read about how the famed attorney, William Kunstler, kept a reproduction of Michelangelo's statue of David on his desk. That statue is unique because it is the only important artistic work of David before he throws the stone to commence the battle with Goliath, before he throws the stone. This timeless work of art sat there on Kunstler's desk as an admonition against weakness when facing trials some thought were unwinnable. Kunstler pondered the lesson inherent in the pose and thought, David is standing there thinking, do I dare, do I dare? He's standing there thinking that if I throw the rock and I miss, I am one dead Israelite. If I just wound him, <laughs> y'all know that was real. <laughs> if I just wound him, I am in the same position. But if I strike him and defeat him, I have done a great deal for myself and more importantly, for my people. You see, David reflects that moment of hesitation that each of us faces before we dare to do something great, something special or unique. Moments when we place ourselves in jeopardy. But if we lack the will to act on these thoughts, if we just allow it to remain a faint inkling in our minds or in our hearts, if we think that we can get away with something that nobody will know, no one will know, more often than not we will find that there is a huge price to be paid in such a personal failing. You see, each of us must decide whether we will live with the memory that your moment came and went and you did not respond. So the question for us now, Atlanta, is what are we going to do? We are in such a moment right here, right now. But I know that we're all prepared to dare, to act boldly, and do what needs to be done at this critical moment in our city's history, to make the hard choices together. So to you, Atlanta, I ask, do we dare? Do we dare? After 100 days in office, I stand here certain of one thing. I ran for mayor not because I wanted to hold the office, but because of the good that could be done with it. So to you I say, let's go. Let's be great. I know we can. Come with me. Godspeed, everybody.